Okay guys, welcome back to the course. And I have good news for 2020. This is an updated lecture for the devices. And there's a new ability that the ESP8266 and the ESP32 have that they didn't have when I started developing the course. So I wanted to update it. So if you remember with our original Arduino sketch utilizing Node Red as that third party intermediary to handle our device certificates for TLS 1.2, it was sending a RESTful Git from the device and it was using the certificates on the cloud to authenticate our sketch and then via MQTT on that output node, send it off to AWS IoT Core for that MQTT broker. So originally we didn't have a way to use the ESP8266 or the ESP32 with TLS 1.2 directly. And that's because the way the firmware was originally configured for the device at Espressif, they never designed it to handle TLS 1.2. Well, here's the good news for 2020. It can now handle TLS 1.2 as of the 2.5 core firmware update. So now that it can handle it, I can now give you a sketch that just came out a few months ago. There's been a number of them, but I'm going to show you what I think is the best one for teaching purposes, where we can send our data payload right from our ESP8266 or ESP32 right over to the IoT Core broker. So how cool is that? So it's a big update, and I think it's a very cool thing. So let's go ahead and look at that sketch. The reason I like this one is it doesn't have a separate credential file. So normally in a production level environment, I'm going to want a separate locked credential file to handle my device certificates. But for teaching purposes, it's nice that I have a one page application here, a one page sketch that can do everything we pretty much want to do for this prototyping. So let's go over the sketch, activate this sketch, and then in the next lecture, I'll modify this sketch to handle our specific data payload. Because right now, this sketch just sounds out kind of a worthless hello world message, and it's not even in JSON format, nor does it have any data. But we can use 90% of the sketch, and we only have to modify our data payload to be a JSON structure. And I'm going to show you a few different ways to do that, and then I'll show you what I used. So let's go ahead, and after you get that link, I'll you can paste it right in, or you can just do a git copy and send it to your Arduino sketch. But let's go over what the sketch is. So first of all, just like with the Node Red lecture, we're using this ESP8266, or maybe you have the ESP32 library. You guys already know how to set that up. I'll provide another link uh, in the resources to a tutorial where you can set up the firmware for the board manager that handles this specific device or the ESP32. Now we do need an additional library here, and this is a very popular library. It's called the PubSub library. It's made by a really good engineer at IBM, and you can see it has 2.4 thousand stars. So super popular. It's used for a lot of MQTT publish subscribe models. So the way you're going to want to load this library in, if you don't know how, is you're just simply going to go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Library, and then you're just going to look for the PubSub library. So you don't need to change your preferences for this. It's publicly available. So I'm just going to type into the search box PubSub. There it is right there. I already, have, of course, have 2.7 installed. If You should have 2.7 or later by the time you see this lecture. Go ahead and install that. If you don't install that, it's not going to know how to instantiate a PubSub client. So after you've installed that, there's another library here, but you don't need to worry about this because this is included in the original default Arduino libraries in a subdirectory. So you already have this library. Again, as always, you're going to need your uh, password and your network ID. So go ahead and put those in here. Now, what you need to do here is enter, again, it's cool because it's a one-page application, is your device certificates. Your certificate here, your private key, and you have the option of putting in a root certificate. The author of the sketch lets you use his root certificate, but you may want to use your own root certificate just because he can revoke this certificate anytime he wants or AWS can revoke his certificate. But I'm going to show you kind of the best way to format this because your certificate has to be formatted with this opening quotes. Okay guys, I just wanted to interrupt this lecture with an update to make your life easier. There's now a new way to do these certificates without having to take the extra five minutes to format them in that kind of awkward format that the original author used by simply using this end of file command. But you basically have to do the R quote EOF command to start and then at the end of the file do the closing EOF. 
And that's an easier method than having to format the beginning and end of each line. I'll provide you two sketches so you can employ either method you prefer. But this is just a quick update to save you a few minutes of having to format everything with this new method. And this quote forward slash at the end. So go ahead and open one of your certificates. And I'm going to open my regular certificate here. This is one of three. You got your certificate, your private key, and of course your CAX509 root. I'm just going to open this in Notepad++. And then let's copy the formatting of kind of how he's done his. And again, this formatting, if you don't have this formatted correctly, it's not going to work. So all you see here, and I'm going to make this much easier, so it's not going to take you 20 minutes to do this. It's only going to take you a couple minutes per certificate. I'm going to copy this quote and forward slash here. And all I'm going to do is go through each line of these, quote here, and then a control V here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, control V here. And this will take you about a minute per, per certificate. You just go through and do it all just so it looks like this. Now, the other thing which I forgot to show you is it's further up here is your endpoint. He's using US West 2, and I'll use US West 2 as well for this example. You guys should be on US East 1. So US West 2 is Oregon, US East 1 is going to be North Virginia, where I advised you created your IoT Core certificates. And remember, IoT Core certificates are region specific. So when you create them in US East 1, you can't switch your region to US East 2 and expect your device to connect. It has to stay within US East 1. So that's all you need to know. But all these endpoints look the same, except for instead of US West 2, yours is going to say US East 1. And then you're going to have your unique account number. And again, if you want to find out where this is, you already know where it is. Just go over to IoT Core and go to Settings. And here I'm in US West 2 already. So if I'm over here in Settings, there's the certificate right there, our endpoint. So we need to stick that in there. So make sure you stick your endpoint in there. Go ahead and stick all your certificates in here. And then the other couple things I want to point out is we have a, this published subscriber. Remember, we loaded that PubSub library. And here's our publish message. It's saying PubSub client publish, and it's publishing to out topic, the C string message. And this message here is just hello from ESP8266. So again, this sketch is kind of not useful for what we're doing as far as our data payload goes, but it's useful as far as it can publish this message. And the other two things I want to point out to make the certificate valid, you'll see it uses this pool NTP time. So you, it's going to go out and search for the current time because these device certificates have a time component. So you're not sending device certificates that have expired by three years. So your sketch needs to know the current time to send that info along with the device certificate. So if you're wondering why we're going out searching for current time on this sketch, that's the reason. And the last thing I want to show you is on our subscribe, which is on InTopic, I'm going to show you how you can use InTopic to publish from the cloud to the device. So those are the few things I want to show you. So let's go ahead and run the sketch. I've already put in my specific information. So I'm just going to go to open and this has my certs in it and my endpoint and my ID. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. I'll speed through that. It's going to be compiling. Okay, when it says resetting the RTS pin with the current firmware version, we know it's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and open my monitor here. And it's kind of looking for Wi-Fi. I'm just going to leash this to my phone. So let me activate my hotspots. With your network, it should automatically connect. I just want to leash it because I'm on a different network from my computer than I have from the device. So there it's going. It's connecting through my endpoint here to US West 2. And it's going to start sending that hello message information. There goes publish message one. It's just going to have a message counter one, two, three. So let's go see really quickly what that looks like on the cloud. And we'll go to test. And again, if you want to see if your device is connecting, you can always go here to monitor. It'll show the connection. And again, if you have your monitor connecting, but you're not getting any information under your topic and test, it probably means your endpoint is correct, but your device certificates are not correct or not installed correctly or not activated. So that's a good debugging technique. Let's go back here to test. And do you remember what our publishing topic from the device was? It was out topic. So we're going to subscribe to that topic on the cloud because we're publishing from that topic to the device. So we're going to put out topic here and what we expect to see is what we've seen at that device monitor. It's going to be sending over things here to Oregon. And again, here it is. It's starting at message six and it's kind of a worthless message. So let's go in the next lecture and alter our data payload coming out of the device 
And then we can see what other methods we can use to send data from the ESP8266 or the ESP30 device to AWS IoT Core. Okay, with this lecture, I just wanted to add, instead of sending that string message, hello from the ESP8266 or the ESP32, if you're using that, let's set it up with a couple different methods, or at least showing you one method of how we can alter our data to send more of a JSON format so we have actually something useful that we can send so this sketch is exactly what i've showed you before i've only made one significant change and it's simply to send a fake data packet using this sprintf command so this command is like string print to file and there's a number of different ways to kind of do a json structure with basic c that can be handled by an Arduino sketch, because remember the base level of, of Arduino is C++, which has C underneath it. All these methods are, back in the day we used to call them functions, are like 20 years old, but they're really efficient. And then I'll talk about one new method, but we can use what I'm using, sprintf, to load up a buffer. We're just gonna create a fake buffer, randomize a couple variables for temperature and humidity, and then add this milliseconds divided by a thousand, because it's one tick per thousand, and then we're going to format that data, stick it into our fake data buffer here that's a thousand chars wide, and send it up to the cloud. So that's what we're doing here. So we can use this sprintf, but we can also use snprintf, which is like sprintf, but it gives us one other parameter that kind of ensures a proper file size. So we don't want to blow up our buffer if we can only send via our radio library so big of a buffer each cycle. But there's other commands you can use. You can use string copy and strn copy, which again has that third parameter. Now the newest way, which is not 20 years old, is a French developer, I believe he was French, he developed a library called Arduino JSON. And it uses kind of a document publish, and you can look into it. It's over here. It's pretty efficient for dealing with this stuff as well. And it's a newer library. The only reason I'm not using it in the sketch, because it actually is a more durable, robust library, but the only reason I'm not using it in this sketch is because it would require I bring in an additional library up here. And, you know, I, I don't want to do that. I want to keep this as simple as possible. But just realize if you have a bigger payload and you want to do more things with it dynamically, look into that Arduino JSON library because you'll see more of these modern ESP8266 and ESP32 examples using that type of serialization library for JSON data. So let's go ahead and upload this and see what our packet looks like. All right, here it is. The RTS pin is all done here. It's hit that. Let's go to our serial monitor here, and I'm going to, again, leash it to my phone. And we'll see what the packet looks like here, and then we'll see it incoming to the AWS IoT Core broker. And hopefully everything match up. And then I want to show you two more things really quickly. Okay, so I have, again, the uptime and these randomized temperature and humidity. And, of course, you can set up a DHT11 or DH22 one of those BMPs, 1100s, or whichever kind of temperature monitor you want. And it's under the same topic, so it just immediately started publishing over here. And it'll just keep publishing. There it goes. And the uptime, as you see, is always going to go up per cycle. And then the temperature and humidity is randomized. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is, if you remember from our sketch, is with this pub sub model, again, we always have that duplex communication. So if we look for where our subscribe function is, looking for subscribe, and there it is. We're subscribing to something called Intopic. So we can publish from the AWS cloud and receive anything under Intopic via MQTT on that pub sub model to our device. And then once it's on device, we can actuate something based on some conditional in the cloud sent to the device, and maybe we can blink a red light or activate an actuator or something like that. So let's see how that works. Let's go back over here to our broker. And what I'm going to do now is get rid of this because we know that's working. Okay, let's make a published topic. You remember what our published topic was? We don't want to make one up. We want to use this one in topic. So we have to match this topic. So we'll call this in topic. I believe. And then we'll make our message whatever we want. Let's say code alert. 55. Say we have different numbers for different codes, and then we can blink a light or hit an actuator based on that code. So let's publish to Intopic. So we're publishing from the cloud and subscribing on the device. So go ahead and publish that. 
and then maybe I'll move this to 34, publish that. Now when we go to our serial monitor on our device, yeah, we want to make sure this appears. So this actually went from the cloud to the device. So again, it's still publishing simultaneous, still publishing data from the device, but it's all subscribing to data that we sent from the cloud. So this is a very, very cool feature. Now, the last thing I want to show you, I can close this out. We're pretty much done with our sketch. Let's say that I don't have a device. Uh, you haven't gotten your ESP8266 or your ESP32. We can still fake that we're getting data from a real device even though we don't have one via this method. And I remember I didn't show you guys this before. So let's just publish to a fake topic and we'll call it AAA. And then we're gonna subscribe to that same topic, AAA. So go ahead and subscribe to that. And we're gonna publish, again, we can publish whatever message we want. So I'm just gonna make up one. Okay, that's an exciting message, so publish that. And so the point about this is now, since this topic name's different, this isn't going to our device. But the cool thing about this is if we want to move this to S3 or Dynamo or Lambda or Kinesis, whatever we want to do through the action panel over here, the MQTT broker does not know this isn't coming from a device. So that's the point. So it's just, this is a useful trick if you don't have your device present. All right, so let's move on. Okay, now I got another new update for 2021. So I'm keeping you guys current on all the exciting changes that are going on with these sketches. So if you've noticed, or most of you haven't, because I think most of you at this point are probably using the ESP32, the newer device, I'd recommend that one. But it's irresistible sometimes to use that cheaper ESP8266, so some of you are still using that. Now if you are still using the ESP8266 and you're using a newer board manager, guess what? The sketch I provided will no longer work. So I've given you a new sketch and I'm going to provide that in a link in the resources. But basically what you got to do first, and most of you have already done that, is open files, go to preferences, and make sure you have this link pointing to the ESP8266 package. So that way when we go to the board manager in a second, this one will actually pop up. And I've given you instructions on my GitHub of how to kind of type that in the preferences box. Next, go to Tools, go to Board, and go to Board Managers. And after this eventually finishes loading, just type in ESP, and they'll come up with the ESP32. If you have the ESP32, nothing has changed, so you don't need to worry about that. But again, if you're using the ESP8266, here I'm using the old version on this computer, 2.74, but you'll see newer versions are available, 3.02. So here's my whole point. If you've already installed and are using 3.0 or above, you can't use this sketch. You're going to have to use this sketch. And let me explain it really quickly what the difference is. So this is where the difference is up here. You have a pointer to these different certificates, how they're set with newing them up directly from the bare SSL, and then setting the trust anchors here with the root, and then these two are handled with this macro. I don't know why they made that change. I researched it. I couldn't figure out why this has been changed on the 8266. Maybe to cover some kind of security concern that was hacked. I don't know. But again, check your board manager, and if you're using 3.0 or above, then you're just gonna use this new sketch, which is almost identical to the old sketch, except for the way the security's handled. 